Hello everyone. I am Dr. Wang. In this episode, we're diving into the first part of lesson 2 from Let's Learn Mandarin. The topic for this half of the lesson is I have two younger brothers. However, we won't be covering the term younger brothers just yet, that's coming up in the next episode. For this portion of lesson 2, our subtitle is Do You Have Brothers or Sisters? When we teach listening and speaking skills, we'll provide you with some helpful memory aids to make it easier to remember the pronunciations. Additionally, we'll explain why we use these aids to assist in memorization. These tools act like scaffolding to support your memory when it comes to reading and writing the characters. We're confident that you'll find this approach enjoyable and effective in your learning journey. Let's start with the first sentence of the lesson, Gloria's greeting, Mingwen, how are you? Mingwen, ni hao. Mingguan is the name of the male protagonist in the material. Ming is his first name, Ming, and Wen is his second first name, Wen. The character Ming, Ming is composed of the sun Yi. and the moon, Yi. and you can see in the pictograms that ancient people drew the shapes of the sun Yi. and the moon. Yi. So, we can describe Ming in English as sun mingles with moon. We can cleverly use the word mingles to remember the pronunciation of Ming. Ming. The left side of Ming represents the sun, Yi. And we can use the first syllable of rising sun to help remember the pronunciation of Yi. which means sun. The character Yi. meaning moon is easily recognizable, but it's challenging to find a similar pronunciation in English. The closest approximation to the pronunciation of Yi. is the first syllable of Yukon, which is a Canadian territory located near Alaska. The second first name of the male protagonist is Wen. The character Wen is a pictogram that resembles the patterns or netting drawn by ancient people on pottery. To remember the pronunciation of Wen, we use Wendy with red hair and two braids as an intermediary. We imagine transferring the patterns from the pottery to Wendy's forehead to facilitate memorization. I apologize for ruining Wendy's beautiful face with this image. When writing the character Wen, visualize yourself drawing some horizontal and intersecting patterns on Wendy's forehead and this will help you remember both the pronunciation and the meaning of Wen. In previous lessons, mastering six Chinese characters in 10 minutes, the tale of how are you, we've taught you how to use an image of a person being pointed at by a needle to remember the character Ni, meaning you, and an image of a woman holding a child to convey the concept of Ao, meaning good. Now, let's look at the second sentence. Mingguan responds, how are you? Ni hao, Gloria. The sentence structure in the first sentence is, Mingguan, how are you? The structure in the second sentence is, how are you, Gloria? These two sentence structures place the name either at the beginning or the end. Both of these sentence structures are correct in Chinese. In this sentence, Ni is used, which is the female radical version of you. Because Gloria is female, Ni is used here. Ni and Ni have the same pronunciation, which is Ni. To remember the pronunciation of ni, we use a dancer image with a needle-like appearance pointing at the female radical position. This dancer image helps us remember the pronunciation and the character ni. To understand the details of the character ni and its pronunciation, you can refer to our previous lessons. Gloria asks Mingguan, do you have siblings? Mingwen, ni you xiong di jie mei ma? In this sentence, we use a yo-yo ball to remember the pronunciation of the word yo, yo, which means to have or there is slash r. If you look at the character yo, yo, you can see that it depicts a hand holding a piece of meat. Below that, there's a component that resembles the character yeah. but it's not exactly the same. This component represents the flesh radical. While the character yeah. can stand alone as a character yeah. The one at the bottom of the character, yo, yo, cannot stand alone. Instead, it combines with other components to form new characters. The depiction of meat with a hand holding it symbolizes having or possessing. To connect the pronunciation of yo, yo, with the character itself, we use a hand gesture as if we're playing with a yo-yo ball, but we replace the yo-yo ball with the piece of meat. This helps in memorizing both the pronunciation and the character for yo, yo. Let's say it again together. Do you have siblings? Ni yo xiong di jie mei ma? We use the image of Sean Connery digging Captain Jack's mail to help you remember xiong di jie mei. Xiong di jie mei. 
with the addition of the question particle ma, ma at the end. Older brother Xiong, sounds quite similar to the name of Sean Connery, who once played the role of James Bond. We apply Sean Connery digging in the image to assist us in remembering the pronunciation of Xiong. The character Xiong, is a combination of the mouth radical and the person radical. In a crowd, the one who has the privilege to speak is typically the elder brother, which is the meaning of Xiong. As for younger brother, Di, in oracle bone script represents rope's wound around a wooden stick. We imagine that a younger person needs to do the laborious task of wrapping a rope around a stick, differentiating it from Xiong, which symbolizes the elder brother who can speak louder. The oracle bone script of Di features the vertical stroke as the stick being wrapped by ropes, with the curvy strokes representing the rope and the upper part as the rope's end. You might find it peculiar, why are there two dots at the end of the rope? It's for the sake of aesthetic balance. The ancients appreciated beauty too. The pronunciation of the character, D, D, is quite close to dig. To integrate these concepts, imagine a younger brother using a tool with a wooden handle, winding a rope around it, and digging the ground. This mental image combines the pronunciation of D with the character's visual form. When you write the character D, think of the two dots at the top as the ends of the rope, the curved part as the rope itself, the middle vertical stroke as the stick wrapped by the rope, and the left bottom stroke as the tail end of the rope. The character Jie, Jie in ancient script was a combination of a woman character and an image of two people carrying a sedan chair. The meaning of Yi Jie, Jie refers to a woman who has already married. The right side of the character Jie, Jie evolved from the image of two people carrying a sedan chair. When writing it, you can imagine the top stroke as the sedan chair bearer's shoulder, the connected strokes below as the bearer's body, waist, and legs, the middle vertical stroke as the sedan chair itself, and the left bottom stroke representing the other bearer's foot. To associate the character's visual form with its pronunciation, we borrowed Captain Jack Sparrow's image and used two jacks as sedan chair bearers. This simplifies the learning process for students and makes it easier to remember how to listen, speak, read, and write the character. Jie. Originally, Jie referred specifically to a married woman. Later, it extended to signify an older female relative, such as the elder sister among sisters. Now, let's take a look at the character, Mei. Mei. In contrast to, Jie, which refers to a married woman, Mei, signifies an unmarried woman, often associated with a younger female relative. The right side of the character, Mei, is, Wei. Wei. Wei, consists of the, wood radical with an additional horizontal stroke on top, resembling tree branches. This extra stroke symbolizes that the tree has not borne fruit yet, much like a woman who has not yet married. The pronunciation of Wei is Wei. To associate the character visually with its pronunciation and meaning, we can use the phrase waiting for the fruit. This connects the imagery of a tree without fruit to the character Wei. Interestingly, when a tree does bear fruit, it becomes similar in form to the character Guo, guo which means fruit. In ancient script, the character Guo, guo depicted tree branches bearing fruit. Over time, it evolved into the character we use today. The pronunciation of guo, guo can be associated with grow, as in grow fruit. This nicely links the character's pronunciation with its visual meaning. The character Mei sounds similar to male, and we can imagine unmarried women having more time to send mail. As for the image of Xiong Di Jie Mei, Xiong Di Jie Mei, it's like Sean digs Jack's mail. The compound word xiong di jie mei means siblings, but you can use xiong di separately for brothers or jie mei for sisters. Xiong di sounds like Sean Diggs and jie mei sounds like Jack's mail. Ma at the end of a sentence is a question particle in Chinese. Unlike English, where a question typically involves rearranging the word order or adding auxiliary verbs at the beginning, in Chinese, you can simply add ma at the end of a sentence to turn it into a question. Next, we will proceed with writing exercises. We extend our sincere thanks to the learning program for Stroke Order of Chinese Characters from Taiwan's Ministry of Education for their invaluable support.
As you practice the stroke order, please keep in mind the associated stories and pronunciations to facilitate effective learning. Mieng Mieng Wen Wen Yo Yo Xiong Xiong Di Di Jie Jie Mei Mei Wei Wei Mu Mu Guo After practicing the stroke order, have you successfully memorized the pronunciation, characters, and the stories behind these Chinese words? The preceding content wraps up the initial portion of Lesson 2 in Book 1 of our Let's Learn Chinese series. The second half will be made available to you shortly. In this segment, we've delved into the vocabulary featured in the lesson. We've dissected the fundamental building blocks of these words and furnished mnemonic aids and narratives to facilitate the seamless association of pronunciation with characters. Our aim is to make the process of incorporating these words into your language skills a smoother and more intuitive experience. We hope you find these mnemonic intermediaries helpful and fun. Remember that language learning is a journey, and it's important to enjoy the process. Practice regularly and don't hesitate to review previous lessons to reinforce your understanding. Thank you for your attention, and see you in the next lesson.